How's everybody today? Good. Well, I don't really have anything different to say about the last game. You know, we got off to a little bit of a slow start, responded better as the game went on, and um, had an opportunity to play a lot of players, which got some val valuable experience for them and uh, some learning opportunities for them as well in terms of what they uh, did and didn't do. Um, you know, players of the week, Ryan Kelly, Ardarius Stewart, uh, Landon Collins, Reggie Raglan, um, Gunner did a good job for us, and J.K. Scott, um, you know, both specialists did a really good job for us. Uh, Gunner never really played before and re really filled in nicely. Nothing really new on injuries. You know, uh, our Darius Stewart and Vogler are probably the two guys that are most questionable. Uh, we'll see how they progress throughout the week, but they would be listed as questionable you know, for the game right now. Uh, not that everybody will practice today, but I think as the week progresses, we're hopeful that everybody will respond and be able to uh, get back and be able to contribute and play in the game. You know, I think uh, the Iron Bowl is one of the greatest rivalries in college football. Uh, this game means a lot to a lot of people in the state, regardless of which side you're on, and also around the country. And um, as a competitor, you know, it's a great opportunity because you know, this game has had a lot of significance, you know, over the last few years and uh, certainly, you know, no different last year or this year. So, um, you know, there'll be a great atmosphere, at ESPN night game here and uh, Bryant-Denny Stadium has been great. So, um, but I also think this is a game where you have to stay focused on, you know, the game uh, and not all the things that, you know, go around on around it. Uh, this game requires a tremendous amount of discipline and focus and preparation to be able to go out there and play, you know, the kind of football game that you want to play. Uh, and you can't be really concerned about all those other things and, and really be able to do that. So um, the focus needs to be on what do I need to do to go out there and really do my job well. Um, you know, Gus has done a fantastic job, you know, uh, last year and this year. You know, being there, they got lots of returning starters, nine on offense, uh, you know, six on defense. Uh, but, you know, I think that obviously their offense is one of the most productive in the country and certainly in our league. Um, you know, they've got a very good scheme. A quarterback, Nick Marshall, does a fantastic job of executing that on the field. Um, they've got a lot of weapons, you know, offensively. A um, couple really good, explosive, big you know, wide receivers that are great vertical receivers and, you know, uh, Coates and Duke Williams, uh, uh, very good running back who's leading the SEC in rushing. Uh, offensive line does a really good job. Lots of speed on the perimeter uh, and, and, you know, a lot of rocket sweeps and things that they do. So this is a very, very challenging uh, team to defend. Uh, and the way they play offense and the way they execute their offense. And their fast pace is, you know, certainly something that we played a lot against this year and uh, hopefully something that we'll be able to adapt to in the game very well. You know, defensively, they're very athletic up front and very active and create a lot of negative plays. And uh, they've been able to create a lot of turnovers with their defense. And uh, they played great in the red zone and been really hard to score on. Um, so, you know, I think this is a, a, a very good defensive team and they always do a great job on special teams, but, you know, Quan Bray is one of the outstanding return guys in the country. Uh, so it's going to be important to, you know, play well on special teams. But um, this is a very, very good team and a great rivalry game and um, certainly as a competitor, you know, something that you know, all competitors, you know, really enjoy playing in games like this against very, very good teams and a lot of good players with, you know, a lot of personal probably um, stuff going on with guys that they know and they played against in high school and maybe even played with. So um, it's, a, it's a great game. Last year with, with their offense, with Greg Robinson and Trey Mason, they were a power between the tackles running team. Do you see that this year or are they more on the perimeter? No, I, I, I think that, you know, their offensive line was certainly very good last year, but it's very good this year. And, you know, they, they run between the tackles, you know, quite a bit. I, I think that last year, 
you know, they hurt us with plays on the perimeter like, like they hurt a lot of people. But uh, I think some of their most effective plays uh, that complement their inside running game is the way they run the ball on the perimeter. Uh, and I think that's the thing that, you know, makes it hard to defend. So it's not that they're one or the other. I think it's the combination of the two uh, and their ability to throw play action passes, you know, vertically down the field to some very good receivers that, you know, make them you know, one of the best offensive teams around. Just kind of building on that, what is what is Duke Williams' presence in that offense done, and how, how different are they when he's in and when he's out of the lineup? Well, I, I don't think it's really a different offense. I just think that he's such a, you know, outstanding playmaker because of his size. Uh, he's got great hands. i got great range as a, as a ball catcher. I mean, he makes some catches that probably most other guys couldn't even get to the ball, and uh, he, he makes great catches, and um, again, you know, the compliment is is big guys that run vertical patterns uh, with the play action game that they have are difficult to defend. And uh, I, I think that you know when he's there, they have more than one guy like that, which makes it even more difficult. Could you talk a little bit about more what makes? I have two questions if I could. What makes Nick Marshall so difficult to defend? Well, you know, first of all, the guy is really, really a fantastic athlete. Uh, and he's very instinctive, you know, as a player, uh, especially doing the things that uh, they ask him to do in their offense. He also has improved, in my opinion, you know, quite a bit as a passer, you know, mu much more efficient, much more confident. Um, and so the combination of his athleticism when he keeps the ball on the options with the opportunity to throw it or run it uh, is, a, is a bit of a mismatch a lot with the defensive ends that have to try to, you know, contain him. So, um, you know, the guy's just a really, really good player, especially doing the things that they ask him to do. And last, last year's ending obviously gets a lot of attention outside this building. Do you use that? To, is that something that you want replayed in the video room, that weight room that kind of motivate these guys? Or? Well, you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, we all kind of remember what happened. I think that um, it was very, very disappointing, you know, to all of us here, the, the way not just the last play, all right, but the last five minutes of the game uh, that we never really ever finished the game uh, like we needed to. And uh, it was a tough way to lose a game, and I'm sure that everybody sort of has, you know, that in mind. in the year since playing them, how better prepared do you think this defense is to face this offense, this style of offense and the speed? Well, I don't think that we're any better prepared than we were a year ago. I, I think that, you know, we actually held them to 21 points for, you know, 59 and a half minutes in the game um, and did, did a pretty decent job. We made some mistakes um, and they let that, those mistakes led to some big plays. Uh, but they also, you know, were a very, very good team that, you know, made some plays on their own, um, uh, which good players will do. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we didn't finish the game like we, we wanted. Uh, and I hope that, um, you know, we'll be able to play uh, the kind of defense we need to play to give ourselves a chance to be successful in this game against, you know, as I've said many times before, you know, a very, very good offensive team. Very challenging. Coach, how much of that challenge is the eye candy that they give you? The, 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 the you know, they motion out and then they'll run a guy in motion right before us. Now, how much of the pre snap stuff part of that difficulty defending them? Well, you know, there's a, there, there's, there's a method to, you know, what they do. I mean, everything that they do, I think they do for a reason. It's very well founded. You know, as I said before, I think Gus does a really good job. Because I think he knows how people would try to defend them if they just lined up in their formations. All right, so you know, you know the 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 camouflage that he uses with the motions and all that all right, is something that defensive players have to adjust to. But uh, it also doesn't allow you maybe to get set like you'd like to get set. So um, it it takes more adjusting on the defensive player's part. Um, but you have to defend all those things too because 
they don't just do it. They have something that they can do with it that you have to defend. Uh, Coach, Amari Cooper has had a season and career like no other uh, setting milestones. Would you give your perspective on his play and performance here at the University of Alabama? Well, you know, Amari Cooper has done a great job for us his entire career. I think he's improved and uh, been a more productive player, you know, each year uh, as he's matured, you know, personally and as a player and gained more knowledge and experience. And, um, you know, he's had a phenomenal year this year. I mean, we featured him a lot of things, and he seldom disappointed us in, you know, the way he's performed and the way he's played. So, um, you know, we're just trying to get him in a position to hopefully get him to finish strong so that he can put a, a, a great cap on what has been so far an outstanding year. Just wondering how have the tight ends behind Brian progressed this year, and if he isn't 100%, who, who will be able to fill that role for him? Well, you know, we've got – Several guys that have been playing in games, you know, Brandon Green, um, you know, has, has played quite a bit. You know, we have a lot of uh, confidence in O.J. Howard, um, and, you know, he can certainly, um, Dakota Ball has played, you know, quite a bit in that position. So uh, those guys have all gotten some experience as the year has gone on, and, um, you know, they'll all have to contribute in some role in this game. There's no question you're going to have their full focus, you know, your players' full focus this week. Is there anything Is there anything tricky about making sure they don't peak on a Thursday or on a Friday? You know, do you have to hold them back a little bit so that everything comes together on Saturday at 6 o'clock? Well, you know, as a coach, that's what you're always trying to do. You know, try to do it last week um, and – didn't do a very good job of it against the team that we were playing. Um, we try to do it every week so the players are ready to play when the game comes. And, um, you know, I think the, the, the thing that we try to do is, you know, we have a routine that the players go through in terms of what they can expect on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And hopefully that routine helps them prepare themselves, you know, not only physically, uh, to execute and do the things they need to do in the game, uh, but also psychologically in terms of, you know, getting themselves ready to play the game. And don't want to create a lot of anxiety with our players. We just want our players to be, you know, focused and ready to go and, you know, have a sense of urgency and uh, to do things the right way and be able to do it for 60 minutes in the game because uh, I'm sure that's what it's going to take in a game like this to have a chance to be successful. Uh, Coach, I had a question about... TJ Yeldon, um, first, how does he affect your running game when he when he is available, and how did how do you think the off week helped him come well, into the game? You know, he, we we've been fighting injuries all year, not all year, but the second half of the season with him, and even though he's been able to play, uh, he hasn't been able to practice the way he'd like to practice and the way we'd like for him to practice, and um, he 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 has been by far, in my opinion, our most effective guy all the way around when it comes to blocking, running the ball, being a pass receiver. Uh, and I think that I've said this before that, you know, people don't appreciate that in a running back, uh, the things they do when they don't have the ball. Everybody sort of recognizes what they do when they do have it. Uh, and, and that's the part of it that I think has made him most effective. You know, we're hopeful that by just shutting him down for – you know, seven days like we did, that it's going to get him healthier, more ready to practice, and uh, be able to be better prepared to play in this game. So um, that was kind of the plan with the way we managed it last week. And, uh, you know, we'll just see, have to see how it works out. With Auburn's running game, I know they have a couple of guys back there, Cameron Artis Payne and Corey Grant. I want to get your thoughts on, the, on their change of pace and how they do that from time to time. Well, you know, both guys in their own way are really, really good players. Uh, they always seem to have, you know, a guy that is a really good all-around inside-outside type runner. Um, and then they always seem to have a guy that has great speed on the perimeter. And this year, you know, Corey Grant and number five both have, you know, done that. So is number four. Quan Bray has done it some too. Uh, so 
they always have a really good combination of guys uh, to be able to do these things. And um, I think both those guys have ex played extremely well. Uh, but I think you also got to give them a lot of credit because of the way they use those guys and how effective they are and how they're used. Coach Sunday, Rhett Lashley said the energy level, the intensity level when you're coaching in this game is unlike any other game. He compared it to an SEC championship game, a national championship game. Having coached in seven of these now, how would you describe the energy level, the intensity level of it? Well, I, I think that, you know, I really can't compare this to anything else because when you're playing in this game and any of those games, it's the most important game that you're playing in at that time. And uh, so I think that the energy level and the intensity is always, that's what makes it fun, you know, to play in games like this. Uh, but, you know, this game is one of those games that, as a competitor, that's where you get to. Now, there's other games that you have to play in that you mentioned that you need to get to there too. Uh, because if we were playing in one of those games, you'd be asking me the same kind of questions. All right, so can't really compare it. It's just when you play in big games like this uh, that have a lot of meaning to a lot of people, um, you don't compare it to anything. Uh, you just know that there's a special level of intensity that you know, goes with playing in a game like this, and both sides are going to have it, and that's what makes it a great football game.